Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. And as always, for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today, we've got a team that I've put together. Uh, we've been featuring a lot of rental teams recently and we've still got a lot of rental teams to go. We've got a little bit of time left in Series 9, but today I thought we'd go back and have a bit of a throwback to an old Pokemon that's maybe been a little bit forgotten about in Cresselia. So Cresselia is kind of the main kind of sticking point to uh, to play in this team today. Obviously, it can't perform by itself. It's a very good supportive Pokemon, a very good kind of uh, defensive tank to come in, just soak up damage and things like that, disrupt opponents, and um, can set the speed control with Trick Room as well very nicely, and also support with Help in Hand. Now, we will have a rental code for this team, so I'll throw that up at the end of the episode like I normally do, and then there will be a poker paste down in the description as well if you want to grab that try it out on showdown or just check the details out of the team then you're more than welcome to but the rest of the team consists of as you can see the heatran the urshifu dark and fighting type then we've got primarina something that i really do love and you know it relates a little bit to our last episode if you missed that you want to go back and check that out after this one where we saw a very offensive finny with a weakness policy do a lot of work in that game and primarina is a bit like a tapu finny it's just a very it's just way more more offensive and uh, we've got the assault vest on it here so we can take advantage of it it's going to be our main kind of pokemon uh, to take advantage of the trick room and then we've got rillaboom to help support against opposing water types that the primarina might struggle with a little bit and then thunderous as well which kind of gives us that dual coverage against opposing waters and other threats that may cause us issues like grass types that thunderous can kind of come in and just help clear those up so this is the team as always i hope you enjoyed today's episode and without further ado friends let's get into our first match of today okay first of today we have a charizard talk called lilligant reggie rock cobra lion and primarina what's the chances of us playing primarina and coming against the primarina in our first match up today so uh let's see what we've got we've got the sun mode we've got lilligant it can cause us all sorts of issues with that after you and also sleep powder which can be a little bit problematic as well um he trans really good against the sun core in general gotta watch out for scorching sands from that charizard course uh, and earth power as well from the tall call but you know sapping up those big fire type attacks is something that he try and can do better than nothing else um mm, 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 mm. kind of want to bring rillaboom because it gives us the option to go for the fake out into the lilligan turn one if we do see it and kind of helps mitigate there also rillaboom helps out against the primarina um it's just the Charizard causes us all sorts of issues um we might be better off honestly going like thunderous rillaboom Heatran and then I think Cresselia because Cresselia helps us kind of control the board position although is Cresselia going to be actually worthwhile in this match whereas Primarina can kind of come in and, and cause all sorts of havoc once the Ligand goes down um, I feel like Primarina does an incredible job against most stuff on the opposing team um, the other option would be maybe Urshifu for the for the Cobble Iron and the uh, the Reggie Rock but I think Primarina kind of handles both of those pretty well. So we'll go with the Prim and the Rill, the Rillaboom, and we'll see how we get on in this first one today. It's always tricky going up against, like, Lilligant, um, Torkoal. I always have, like, flashbacks to, like, what it was, the 2017 season. Whew. Yeah, well, that was, like, a predominant thing, and that was, like, really awkward to kind of play against. But um, thankfully, we don't have to deal with that today. Um, okay. Now, where are you going to go if you're the Charizard? Where are you going to go? Like, we can go straight after it with um, Thunderous, but we are likely to kind of take a big attack in return, which we kind of don't really want to do. We can fake out into the Torkoal, prevent that from doing really anything here, which which is which is good. Uh, but the problem is I don't really want to lose Thunderous like straight off the bat. The option of switching in something like Heatran is great, but the problem is switching in Heatran for Thunderous, it doesn't really put us in a great position going into the next turn, does it? Um, which can be a little bit tricky. Um, but we would get the Flash Fire Boost, which then does make us a little bit more threatening, of course. I think fake out the, the Torkoal. I'm kind of tempted just to go for the Max, max, uh, max Airstream. Yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna do it, and then we can kind of double up into the the Charizard the next turn. Uh, it means that Rillaboom should get the jump on it after the Airstream, and also at the same time, if Charizard decides to go Airstream itself, at least we're kind of keeping up 
uh, with what they're trying to do. I can see them going. Uh, I may even switch to Charizard, out, which they're not going to, obviously, but that could have been a possibility. But um, Max Wildfire is probably my best guess into Thunderous, which I'm hoping we can take. See what this Torkoal goes for, though. But a Max Airstream and then the Max uh, Lightning should be enough to get the Charizard. And once that's removed, things get a little bit easier for, especially Redaboom, you know, especially like Heatran as well. So there's the fake out. Here's the airstream. Let's see. Damage is good. Damage is fat with that life orb. I missed the life orb damage, you know. But the the drawback with running the life orb is always that you're not going to be able to kind of soak up these attacks in return as well. Uh, we do see the airstream. They'll come out and the cobra berry. This is what I mean. Like we've got the cobra berry there, which kind of gives us that little bit of protection. So the next turn, what we can do is, ooh, is that a crit? Is that a crit? No crit. And we take that just the solar power enough. I wonder if you can EV that. You must be able to. I wonder if it's just too much though. It's not something I've ever looked at because it's not something like really that I've been super, super worried about. Now the Charizard, like I said, definitely in um, a space to go down this next turn. Um, and we can bring in either Heatran or uh, Primarina. Primarina might be the better one because then we get at least some damage onto yeah, the Torkoal here with like a Hyper Voice or a Hydro Cannon. If we choose to go down that route, uh, the other option is obviously going with uh, Heatran um, and going like Earth Power and keeping Prim for later on in this game. Just would prefer not to lose Heatran. I mean, even to an Earth Power coming out. Yeah, I think because Primarina's a bit more weakened <coughs> to uh, with the sun up at the minute, at least Heatran's got that kind of power boost. So we've got Earth Power and we'll go Max Lightning into the Zard. And that kind of locks the Zard in because. Uh, I mean, you can max guard here, but the Torkoal is not going to be in a position to take down our Thunderous. And because we're locking into max lightning, we're not getting any speed boost. So burning jealousy is not really an issue this turn. So I think overall we're pretty safe in what we're doing. And if the Lilligant decides to come on the field, then Thunderous should still get the jump on it. Max guard makes a lot of sense. Let's see what this Torkoal is going to decide to do. And get that nice fat earth power. Two of these should take down the Torkoal. Yeah, easy, easy peasy. If it goes for an eruption, then we're we're fine. But like I say, it goes for that that earth power, which is all right because of the sugar berry were able to take that here pretty pretty handily. Um, and especially with the grassy terrain on the field, makes things a bit easier for us. Now, what we could do here is just go for another max airstream and go for that earth power again, and it puts us like plus two with thunderous. And then plus one with the Heatran, which um, makes it a bit easier to deal with whatever kind of comes in, uh, whether it be the Lilligan or not. Uh, the only other thing to really think about maybe Max Lightning here would be the fact that Lilligan can come in and still probably outspeed the Heatran, put us to sleep, which, you know, the, the, the uh, electric terrain would kind of benefit us a little bit better. And obviously there's an argument there for going for something like... Um, heat wave rather than the earth power because it kind of covers it covers a switch in but unfortunately in this in this situation the primarina coming in the earth power is obviously the better option um so charizard down didn't get the the wildfire off which was it's just such a bonus you know when you're playing against gmax charizard like if you can prevent that then it, it makes life so much easier you're not having to take that residual damage which is one of the big draws for using um something like uh, G Max Charizard, of course, but the uh, the Thunderous proving a little bit more difficult for my opponent to uh, to deal with here. And we got a nice check to the Primarina, obviously, this next turn, depending on what comes in. I do worry about the Lilligant, though, because that is the one thing that can really disrupt our side of the field. Uh, so the great friend Lilligant incoming. Mm. Not great. Not ideal. We need to stall out the sun, really. That's the big thing for us. Um, okay, so I think we got a heat wave because I think if you're Lilligant, you go for the sleep powder into Thunderous here. And because Heatran's got that plus one, we should be able to kind of get the jump on the Primarina at least. 
Not the Lilligan, I wouldn't have thought. Not in the sun. But then the next turn we can fly. Just dodge a turn and stall out these last turns of... Um, stall out these last turns of the sun. So, Sleep Powder into Thunderous. Unless the Heat Wave takes the Lilligan down, you know. If it's, if it's not sashed, it will. But I would presume it's sashed, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Makes sense. And then we'll probably see a Hyper Voice. Ooh, an Ice Beam. Huh, he doubled in and let he try and have a free ride. Okay. Well, now I think what we'll do is we'll go for the fly. Oh, did we go? Yeah, we. Yeah, I think we go for the fly. Because then it pressures the Lilligant the next turn. Because how many turns of Sun are left? Oh, there's only one. Okay. So, yeah, what we'll do is we will protect. Oh, do we? Yeah, protect. Because they could... They could opt to go after the Heatran here with a, a sleep powder. And we don't want Heatran going to sleep. Like, we want to try and avoid that if we can. So, the fly. Fly up high. Sleep powder. Yeah, thunder into the thunderous. So, okay, they're going locking into Moonblast. They're double, were they doubling in? No, they weren't. Okay, now... I think here what we'll do is we'll switch... Our own Primarina into Heatran. Um, just because Hyper Voice could be an option that comes out for my opponent. <clears throat> Although they might go for the Ice Beam into... They may go for Ice Beam into um, into Thunderous, you know? Could be an option for my opponent. Grassy Terrain disappearing. The Lilligan's either going to have to um, protect here. But the problem is with Primarina coming in, hmm, this might have been a better idea to go to go for something like just a heat wave here, just to ensure that we get the Lilligant. Okay, the Lilligant's going to switch out. That's fine. What's coming in the talk? I'll get that sun back up. All right. Well, as long as we don't lose Thunderous to like an Ice Beam here, then we're we're kind of all right. The Fly should take down the talk call, which it does. Um. And it doesn't appear as though the Lilligant has protect. Because I think you could easily just protect in that situation. Hydro Cannon coming out. So that Primarine is tied up this next turn. Which is which is ideal. So we don't even need to go for the Fly the next turn. We can just Wild Charge into that Lilligant. Uh, we will outspeed it. Um, and then we can just go Energy Ball with our Primarina into the opposing one. And get some nice fat damage off before Thunderous can kind of close this game up for us. So the Hydro Cannon there. Uh, really helps us out a bunch. The Wild Charge should get it. With a Life Orb. With a Life Orb. 100% we get it. Yeah. Okay. That's great. And that's so important why we got that. I mean a crit. I don't think that mattered. Really. I'm going to say it didn't matter. I mean it's so imperative like earlier on how we needed to get that second Airstream. Not go for uh, the, the, the Lightning. Although the Lightning would have been useful... It wouldn't have been very helpful for Thunderous, which was the kind of the, the the main tool that we needed in this match to kind of put the pressure on a little bit. So Primarina are going to be able to close this one up for us and uh, will allow Primarina to do that because we'll go for a fly with Thunderous, even though Thunderous has put in a bunch of work for us. Primarina are going to be able to close this one up and uh, we take a win to kick us off today, which is always nice. Very good game to our opponent. Um, a little bit of a shame that we didn't get to see the Cresselia, but we got to see some of the other components of the team. It was a bit of a uh, a game stolen by Thunderous there, but you can still see the the, the value in that, that Defiant Life Orb variant, even though the Prankster variant seems to be picking up a lot more usage recently. But with that, friends, we will jump straight over into our next game of the episode. Okay, next up, we have another Sun team or another variant of a Sun team. We have Venusaur, Torkoal, Lander, Asterion, Metagross, Urshifu, and Mimikyu. So great to see Mimikyu there. Pairs up nicely with th things like the Metagross. It's got obviously access to Shadow Sneak, things like Trick Room that can support that and the Torkoal um, in a bit of a slow mode. And then you've got the really fast defensive mode with that Venusaur and the Chlorophyll taking advantage of the speed boost under the sun. And then the kind of staples, which are your Landorus and your Urshifu. Urshifu obviously paired up with the Mimikyu, going to be a bit of a threat for our Cresselia for sure. Um, going to give us lots of issues. But, you know, if we can get our Trick Room up, it, we can we can potentially do some things. You know, Heatran going to be really good against the Suncore as well. Got to be careful around the Max Quake though. That's going to be a bit of an issue. But 
you know, he trend does well against the majority of this team. Just got to watch out for the for the Urshifu and then the Max Quake or the the Earthquake or the the, the Stomp and Tandem from the Metagross. You know, um, there's lots of Max Quake on my opponent's team. Let's just say that. So, how are we going to approach this? Worry about Sleep Powder on the Venu as well. That's something I do worry about. Okay, let's go Cresselia. Kind of tempted to lead Primarina, but I'm scared in case we see the the Venusaur here. Um, Let's go Thunderous, let's go Heatran, and let's go Prim Arena. Prim Arena. Let's see if we can get the Prim Trick Room mode going in this one. It's gonna be, it's not ideal because obviously we have to like worry about Torko, which really does enjoy the Trick Room, but, uh, and the Venusaur as well. But I mean, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Urshifu and Landorus. Okay. Okay. Well, this is not too bad because we do get a defiant ability procced here. So we do have the option where we could go after the Urshifu. Like pretty hard turn one trick room. And what's the Landorus gonna do? I mean I mean the thing is I don't wanna I don't wanna max. I don't wanna max Thunderous. I kind of want to help. I want a trick room, which we should take. And I w we should take the wicked blow with the cobra berry. Um, we could superpower, to be honest, just to take it down to its sash. Could wild charge as well. Uh, let's go superpower. Because I, I'm thinking here as well, my opponent's probably going to double into the. Well, they're going to go wicked blow into the Cresselia, and I think they'll probably go max rockfall into Thunderous. So it'll be interesting to see if they do max the Landorus here. Which it looks like they're gonna do. I mean, no one really maxes Urshifu, right? Even though there are certain situations where Max Urshifu is actually a decent, a decent option. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. So Landorus maxing. Let's just hope we don't see the double up into uh into Cresselia, because that would be bad. That would be bad. Okay, we take that Urshifu down as Sash, which is the big thing. And you know the big thing here, if they rock fall, they're actually getting rid of their own Urshifu. Uh, straight away and it's pretty much their only option so there's a wicked blow it's gonna be into thunderous though it's interesting hmm now we definitely get the trick room up I don't mind that one little bit what are we gonna see from this landorus rock four yeah okay well this paves the way for primarina to come in this is this is ideal we take that like an absolute champ like this is this is this is what Cresselia does it just saps up damage so well and the Urshifu now like I say is going to go down to that residual damage so maxing the Thunderous there was you know not not the best idea really ever really and um, just getting that damage onto the Urshifu and dealing with it like that makes life so much easier for Cress and um, we may see Torkoal come in but there's not really an issue here because we can get the rain up um, yeah I mean we get the rain up we can go for helping hand even into the landorus here, which which can work. Or I think what we could do is just ice beam the landorus and then go for max geyser into the torkoal. The only issue would be here is if we see yawn from the torkoal, and that really complicates things. Where we'd like we're likely we're better off in that situation going for uh, a max starfall to get the terrain change so we're not kind of subjected to to the um to the yawn so that does worry me a little bit but fingers crossed we don't see that option and a lot of players kind of aren't opting for yawn and going for a more offensive kind of coverage set with torque so we'll see what happens it'd be nice to see the damage that we can do Ooh, just an eruption going after the Cresselia but still you know able to take it like an absolute beast um Get the geyser onto the Torkoal. Gonna do a big old fat knockout chunk of damage. Didn't expect it to pick up the knockout, but Primarina always surprises me. We get the rain up here. So, it's quite nice. And we're gonna be able to see how much his Ice Beam does to this Landorus. Yeah, 50%. I mean, you can't ask for anything more. Oh, can you? <laughs> you get the freeze, but it thaws out. So, it's no, no worries there. We don't mind the, the freeze. Because it's unthawed and uh, the Max Quake coming out. And Primarina, I mean, taking that pretty well. 
I'm going to get the boost there onto the Landorus. But I mean, we're going to be able to pick up the knockout onto it the next turn. Or the Max Geyser. Or we can just concentrate down onto whatever comes in. It is the Venusaur. So it might be better off going after that Venu. With a double up. Although the, the only issue with Venu is... Um, it can it can protect and we don't want to like yeah we don't want to we don't want to uh we don't want to double in on that slot and leave the lander as to go for another max quake whereas a max geyser even with that special defense boost here will be enough to get the lander us and uh yeah no protect coming up from either target there max geyser like i say will be enough to get the lander us no trouble at all primarina is an absolute beast uh, with the Assault Fest as well, if they Sludge Bomb or Leaf Storm, we should take this in our max form. And uh, it's just a Sleep Powder you would worry about a little bit, but there's a Sludge Bomb there. But like I say, because of the Assault Vest, we take that pretty comfortably. Ice Beam going to be enough to uh, take it down about 50% or just lower. Ooh, not even that. That is a fat old Venusaur, isn't it? But we get another freeze. What's with this Cresselia? This Cresselia is nuts. This Cresselia is nuts. It's like, it's, it's like I've been out of action all this time. I'm coming in. And I'm going to show you how it's done. Uh, okay. I mean, yeah, let's just geyser it. Let's just geyser it. we got the rain boost. It's probably our best option here. There's all the option as well on Primarina where you can go for something like um, the Max Hailstorm, like an Ice Beam or a Blizzard or something like that. So it gives you that extra coverage. But I always like the, the fact that with the Assault Vest, you've got uh, the, the Hydro Cannon if you need it in those really tight spots. And you've also got the Hyper Voice that kind of turns with the Liquid Voice into double target attacking water move, which is always nice when you're not in your max form. So very good game to my opponent. I uh, hope you've enjoyed today's episodes and games, of course. And we'll jump over now and get you all the rental code for today's team. <laughs> Okay, friends, here is today's rental team. I hope if you do try it out, you have a lot of fun with it as always. And uh, it's just a little bit different and it gives a little bit of light to a Pokemon that was very strong in previous formats and it's been a little bit forgotten about, but still has a place in the format now with Cresselia. And you saw in that last game how well it was taking those max moves from the Landorus there and, you know, just kind of was able to set up uh, whatever it wanted. It would have been a bit different, obviously, if we'd had that wicked blow into the Cresselia, but with the Cobra Berry, the Colba Berry that we've got attached to the Cresselia does mean that we are able to kind of manage a situation against the uh, the Urshifu a lot better and even that combination of Wicked Blot and then the Max move we would have been able to take that pretty well and then we're in a position the next turn to go for either a Helping Hand or even a Moonblast into the Urshifu to knock it out but thankfully it wasn't the case so uh, we did get to see the Primarina in action which is always great the Thunderous in the, the first game took over so we've seen pretty much most elements excluding the Urshifu but I mean we've seen Urshifu a million times in this format already you know what it's about so it's just an additional option works really nicely with the team in general and especially that Thunderous so thank you so much as I say for tuning into today's episode friends like I say I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, we'll wrap things up then we'll be back very soon with a rental team from one of you fine people in our next episode so until then friends take care of yourselves and I'll see you all on the next one so until then take care bye bye